the Lone Rider, uh, Kyoko, Garmin XT GPS, Quad Lock, Focus for the heated grips. One tip that I have for my Africa Twin Riders, if your fingertips ever get cold, one way to keep them warm, especially if it's not raining, if it is raining, there's another option. Hello and welcome, I'm Konstantinos and today I will take you through all the add-ons upgrades that I have done to my 2018 Africa Twin 1000 manual. The bike right now has about uh, 70,200 kilometers. I haven't had any issues so far. I have done the, obviously, oil virtue change, coolant, and the spark plugs. I know that the Honda suggests uh, to do the valve clearance at 24,000 kilometers or 60,000 mi 16,000 miles, I believe it is. But I haven't done that. I haven't had any issue with it. I did notice though, or upon my return from my trip, like a few thousand kilometers ago, it started uh, ticking a little bit. I don't think it's a big deal so far. Now, one upgrade that I have done is obviously the suspension. OEM suspension is a little bit on the soft side, but uh, with few adjustments, like compression, uh, rebound, and preload, it stiffens up a little bit and it definitely you can feel the difference on handling. Now, the upgrade that I went with was the Hyper Pro Plus 22, real coil and front springs. Definitely have seen big change in uh, handling, off-road, it's pretty awesome. And by adding the 22 millimeter, definitely the bike rised a little bit, but also I gain a little bit height, it doesn't sag as much or when the bike is loaded. Now Hyper Pro comes in uh, three different kits. You have the lowering kit, you have the standard kit which just replaces the OEM and then you get the Plus 22 which that's the one that I bought. In the, in the box obviously you got real coil and two front springs. Obviously they have some instructions and settings to it and they provide you with a fork oil. Even though with their settings that they provide you, I did find that I had to adjust it and harden it a little bit. Compression, the rebound and the reload, preload. Let's start with the, the cockpit. <laughs> obviously for GPS, we have the Garmin XD. It has a lot of features so far. I like it, I never had any issue with it. I don't use all the features that it has in it. I guess I'm that type of guy that, especially like connecting with uh, Bluetooth and all that, like cell phones and that. Like when I'm on the bike, I don't wanna have all that. I just wanna be me and the bike. But definitely one thing that I did find really useful was eye overlander. I definitely used it a lot and definitely it was really useful being out there in the back country, trying to find a place, other suggested places. So it definitely became really useful. And also another app that I used a lot was uh, the history app where you can find either places of you know interest, uh, history or places you can visit. So now next to it right here, that's the bracket for my GoPro. Obviously the RAM mount. I used to have a RAM mount for my cell phone, but I had it for two years and I only used it twice. So I took that off. And since uh, this bracket right here broke when I was up in uh, Prudhoe Bay when I dropped the bike, then I modified this RAM mount for the GoPro. With this scenario, I had to be a little bit more careful. That's how many people go with, but I don't know if I really like it. Now down here, we have the quad lock mount. It's not for my cell phone. I use it for my remote controller for the drone. Down here, we have the Scotch stabilizer. This is the, the switch for the, the Denali spotlights. Obviously the switch for the Oxford uh, heated grips. They're pretty good. I really like them. Definitely they keep your palm heated, not your fingertips. But one tip that I have for my Africa Twin riders, if your fingertips ever get cold, one way to keep them warm, especially if it's not raining, if it is raining, there's another option. So now if you're riding, you can kind of lean a little bit more forward and keep your hands on the radiator right here. And all the heat from the engine comes out of there and definitely, definitely helps a lot to keep your fingertips and your hands warm. Second option, if it is raining, it's right here, right between right there, both sides, obviously. Uh, to keep, there's not a lot of heat comes out of this, but just enough though to keep your fingertips uh, a little bit warmer. But uh, yeah, right here by the radiator, in within five minutes, if your hands or your fingertips are like pretty like cold, it, it helps a lot. Now on this side, I have the Kyoko throttle holder so it's kind of like a cruise control without a cruise control I've seen some other ones out there but i don't like them because they're a little bit on the bulky side and the reason i like it is because you're holding the throttle you twist boom locked in and unlocked another great that i've done is uh, brake and clutch lever 
They cost around 60 bucks from uh, e-speed MTO. They're both adjustable. You can adjust them forward or backwards. Same with this. One main feature that I like, they're a little bit shorter. Definitely you can, when you're braking or you're clutching, you can feel the difference from the OEM ones. But one key feature that I like is how they flip up. Both, both sides. And I did find uh, quite a bit handy, especially on the clutch side, when I'm kind of like rolling the bike and or I'm about to drop the bike and I'm holding the clutch in, my the bike is about to slip. You can kind of like hold the clutch in like that. and. Uh, definitely comes useful. Now, as far as the tank bag, this one is uh, the Lone Rider. Prior to that, I had uh, the GV uh, 50 XS 15 liter, which is this one right here. Halfway through my trip up in Northwest Territories and Alaska, the zipper went. But I mean, like, it put up a fight. I had it for like about six, seven years. I do really like the fact that it has a turn lock on it where the Lone Rider and many other luggage out there, they are with straps. But I mean, a little sacrifice. This one is a nine liter, that was a 15 to 20 liter, but so far I like it. And definitely I like the, the magnetic uh, buckles. That's one figure twist, then kind of like locks in. Now it does come uh, with a strap that goes around the neck of the bike, but I tried it out, but I didn't really like it due to the fact that I do have the Scots steering stabilizer and it was kind of like hitting and I don't like keeping the back down. I like to keep it more upwards. So when you're standing and you're riding, you don't hit your crutch there, <laughs> uh, you know? So what I did, I did have two extra straps. So I trimmed them down and what I did, I bought them both here on this side and this side. One thing that I like with this setup is when you're pumping gas, you don't have to unstrap both. With this setup, I just kind of like unstrap with one, put the tank back on the side, pump up, one hand, buckle it in, boom, done. Yeah, so I like that. Here we have the 12 volt accessory for charging stuff, and this is kind of like a, a little homemade waterproof uh, protection, I guess you can say. The only reason I did that, because it was a couple times few years back that I needed to charge but because it was raining. I was a little bit uh, cautious about it because I didn't want any electronic failure. So for the seat, I have this uh, Wind Rider cover. It definitely, it's handy. One reason because it gives you a little bit extra cushioning to your butt, but at the same time, it allows the rain to run off instead of just sitting on the saddle. And also, I really like it because in the hot weather, the air goes through, it circulates the air, so it cools down your butt. Now, in the colder weather, you feel it a little bit colder, obviously. Uh, back here, this is a new addition after I came back from my trip, Nanuk 910. Here we have the GV Trekker rack down here we have the Asebris uh, 2.0 chain guide for chain obviously the id uh, x-ring sprockets i have the the jc sprockets now moving forward here i have added uh, the moscow moro a uh, foliar pouch now i was planning on going either with a lone rider or the kriega but since I had one of those uh, Molly pouches, I decided just to buy another one. It was uh, around 80 bucks Canadian, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And they work perfect. They're not waterproof, but I mean, they did their job. And if I want to waterproof them, I just add two waterproof bags in there. Spotlights, we have the Denali DR1s. They're more of a spotlight instead of like a floodlight. I prefer anyways. And when you lean with the bike around the turns, the light goes with it, so they have about, uh, the beam distance is about like pretty solid 600 feet, but it goes up to a thousand feet. And width uh, is about 75 to 80 feet. Hand guards, we got bark busters, and I use the storm cover. And for the exhaust, we got uh, nothing else but they are Krapovich. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't change it. I love the sound, everything. How could I forget the crash bars? We have the Outback Mortec uh, crash bars. It's a pretty solid product. I really like it. I had a couple of falls and I dropped the bike a couple of times, but the couple of falls that I actually like slid, they held up pretty good. The only downside I find is they add a little bit weight to the front end. 
So besides that, they're pretty solid. Uh, skid plate, I still have the OEM skid plate. I'm not doing anything crazy to add a skid plate to it. And yeah, and also with like the Outback Mortec uh, skid plate, it's kind of bulky and also it covers this section of the engine, which I find in my thoughts anyways that it blocks airflow to the engine to keep the engine more cool. For the time being, I don't think I need a skid plate, so. And that is my two cents. <laughs> I hope uh, you find some of those things uh, useful. Please let me know in the comments down below if what you have done to your bike, if you suggest something, it would be much appreciated. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing, it's much appreciated. Till next time, my friends, peace and love. Ride safe.